One station making history every day. Chicago, Chicago. Now, John Cass and Lauren Cohn. 89 Welcome back, John Cass, Lauren Cohn. Here's a question for all of you. Is the Democratic machine in this state so pervasive that we can't even have the appearance of a fair trial? Mm -hmm. Or is everyone connected? Is every politician and judge connected back to some machine hack somewhere? Right. There's so many tentacles out there that there's just no way for anything to be fair. Yes. And the reason we're asking this is, Lauren? Is because of all the information we just found out in the Vineco case with Judge McIntyre and her husband or ex-husband who lives with hers, uh, so-called connections to the Daily Machine. And we have the man on the phone who's been unraveling all this, Tim Novak of the Sun-Times, to explain it all. Hey, Tim. Good morning. So, Tim, um, tell us uh, briefly your story. The way I see it, Judge McIntyre's husband lives ex-husband. In, ex-husband lives in the same house with her, correct? Apparently, yes. And and that therefore a cynical person might say well, that was a way to keep the wealth in the family without losing it in, during a bankruptcy. Someone might a say a cynical that. person might say or that. let's say a fair <laughs> reading, a fair a reasonable man might say that if you're in Illinois. Okay. And now you come out with the story uh, front page story of the Tribune. Uh, sometimes, why did I Thank do you. that? Thank sorry. you. I don't know why you did that. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wish we had it. Saying that uh, the connections with her husband go back to the depression in the Democratic machine. That he was a payroller. His mom was a payroller and rent was put up for office. His dad was a payroller. They're all payrollers. Mm-hmm. The family of payrollers, yes. What's been the response? Well, we want to get some calls here, five nine one eighty nine hundred. The case she is, in case you've forgotten, the case that this Judge McIntyre is handling is the Van Echo uh, homicide, or manslaughter case in which the nephew of the mayor uh, allegedly punched a little guy, killed him. There was going to be a trial in Cook County, but they couldn't have the trial in Cook County because all the judges are connected, right, Tim? Right. So, so they moved it to McHenry, <laughs> where what? allegedly the judges wouldn't be connected. And, and why wasn't she vetted, or why didn't she admit to this? Because you, you, we had you on a couple of weeks ago talking about this story. Um, well, I, I, we're not sure that she knew her husband and his family had all these ties. We've never, she's never responded to our questions, so we're really not sure what she knows or doesn't know. Well, how could she not know? Well, I think. I, d- I didn't know that my my great great grandfather was a horse thief, but he was. Actually, a very interesting story. I'll tell you sometime, Tim. But not in the Democratic <laughs> machine, right? Right. You know, there's. You know, I, I'm without naming names. We know if there have been candidates who've been put up candidates for office and didn't even know they were put up candidates, right? Right. So, do people always know what's going on? I don't know. Uh, we don't really know. We just felt it was worth writing about well okay if you're the uh, the citizen you're or you know the resident taxpayer of the state you read the sun times today you can't come away with thinking without thinking is everybody you know, are all these judges lawyers this whole crew are they all connected are they, is there just no independence that everyone's got some connection we don't want nobody nobody sent that sort of thing that's true you know, and and what are we at at basis at the bottom line? What are we talking about? A fair trial for who? A fair trial. Well, actually, it's a fair trial for Vaneco, but it's also a fair trial for uh, the victim, David Koshman. And tell us about him, in case people forget. Uh, well, the one the one thing that that uh, David's mother, uh, Nancy Koshman, has mm-hmm. told us. Uh, over and over again in this case, and, and every time we do another story, it becomes more apparent. She says that uh, everybody in this case knew everybody else, but her and David didn't know anybody. And there's a lot of truth to that. Well, the cop, who, the detective who investigated the case, originally one of the first detectives, uh, turns out now he's working for Lisa Madigan, correct? Yes. What's his name again? 
Ronald Yager. And he's the one who told, did he tell Mrs. Kochman, back off, you can't handle, is, isn't that her testimony? Um, she's, you can't win with these people? In other words, you're nobody, nobody knows you, so back down. Yeah, a detective told her that. We're not exactly sure that it was Yard or Mrs. Kaufman mm. is unable to recall the I detective see. who told mm. her that. So it's some detective. We don't know who it is. Yes. I'll, I'll ask you this, Tim. Um, what recourse does Judge McIntyre have now that this story came out in your paper? Does she, I would predict, that he, she's got to either recuse herself or respond mm-hmm. Well, and I would say if I were writing a column uh, this week on it, uh, which I'm not writing till Wednesday, it would be she is going to respond from the bench. She has to. The next, the next time they 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 have a court hearing of some kind, she has to stand, sit there at the bench, and either differ, you know, differ with your point of view on this story, or at least address it somehow. Don't you think? Well, I would think so. At some point, she does have to address this. The next court hearing, however, isn't until May 15th. It's a status date when I suspect they may set a trial date. And she has refused to give you any comment on that? Or do you have any knowledge of she might recuse herself? Um, I have no knowledge of whether she would recuse herself or not. Um, And she hasn't. she hasn't responded to our calls or letters or emails. So... Has anyone from the court system responded? Um, has anyone from the court system? No, from but the I, courts in Illinois, because ultimately, isn't this a decision by the Illinois Supreme Court to agree with the Cook County Chief Judge Tim Evans, right? Yes. That and Tim Evans, I remember him when he was just an alderman doing uh, personal injury cases. Uh, from the CTA, and now he's like a heroic judge. Tim, in case you're listening, and then um, and so but that's Tim why Evans we... did do the right thing in yes. this case. He did ask to have this case moved out of Cook County, and he did that. I think it was uh, Jason Meisner at our paper. Someone did a, a a study, found that most of the criminal court judges were connected to Daly. So if they if Tim Evans did do the right thing, but if he had not. Done. It asked for a change of venue, so to speak. We would have found maybe you found out like five, six, seven, eight, nine judges in a row right. were precinct captains or something, right? Well, I think part of the story that is here uh, on a background, uh, what's going on in the background is that these stories seem to be embarrassing to the courts. So uh, I, I think today's story and the last story we did on her divorce. Uh, are a larger issue for the Illinois courts in general. And what would that be? Well, I don't know, but I, I, I've been told that uh, this is very embarrassing for the courts. So, Yes, um, well, well, we'll have to see how this goes on. Uh, Tim Novak, sometimes you and... Uh, did you write this with Chris? Yes. You and Chris Fusco, excellent story once again. Thank you, buddy. All right, thanks, John. Excellent story. Page one of the Sun-Times, it hurts me to say it, but it's true. And when it's true, we say it.